How are you? How are you doing? Alright, how are you? Oh, steady mate, steady. Everybody, PJ here. We're still in workshop and we're outside a company called V12 Sports and Classics. So uh, let's have a look and see how it goes, shall we? Well, I mean, they've got speakers and cameras everywhere. Now, as you can see, we've got uh, a gentleman here offloading new cars for stock. Now, I did spend a bit of time driving car transporters many, many years ago. And uh, it's bloody hard work. Now, this is a drawbar unit, which, uh, which makes it a little easier to drive. You haven't got that long overhang on the front that sticks out over the cab so that when you turn the cab you take down lampposts and things like that. So we'll have a look up here and you'll be able to see that it is a drawbar unit. Now it's taking the straps off here now. How you doing mate? Well, yeah look it's a drawbar unit so it's a small tractor unit carries the cars and it's a fairly long trailer on the back that the other cars go on. Now they're connected by hydraulic rams up there look. You can possibly see them. Let me just tip the camera up a little bit. You might be able to see a bit better. Controlled by hydraulic rams that pushes these ramps out here so it can get the cars on the front part. Now what I'm talking about with the uh, with the old-fashioned car, car transporters. Let's just go around the front and have a look. Now here, it's more or less fixed over the cab. With the other ones, it was like a normal trailer. So that as you turn the cab to go around the corner, that bit that sticks out at the front used to stick out sometimes at right angles or more. And if you weren't careful, lampposts and things used to disappear. We'll have a, a look as he finishes here, see if we can have a word with the driver. I don't know if he wants to talk to us or not, he may do. But driving car transporters is one of the best paid jobs when it comes to being a truck driver because it is so skilled. You have to know exactly what you're doing. You have to set, uh, sorry love, you have to set the height and everything so you can get under the bridges. Um, there's quite a few incidences where these have hit the bridges and uh, some of the cars on the top deck have been quite badly damaged. Uh, I'm not sure how many cars it can get on here, but they tend to carry a lot more than uh, the old fashioned conventional type trailers. But as you can see look, they've got walking ramps and everything up there. I was once walking down one of these and it was wet and instead of having these holes it was a crisscross pattern and I slipped and my feet disappeared from underneath me. I landed on my backside and I got a massive bruise on one of my arse cheeks that just looked like steak that had come off at grill. Um, it wasn't particularly funny but it was a nice pattern. <laughs> Not that I want that pattern on my arse again, you know. Now, I don't know if this is his regular vehicle or one that uh, everybody uses, but he's got to clear all these straps away yet. He's got to tighten all these straps down and make them secure for when he goes out on the road. I mean, how many times are you driving down a road, especially motorways, and you see straps in the middle of the road? Uh, and that's purely and simply because the driver or whoever uh, put the straps on the back have not tightened them up properly. They've just chucked them on the back and left them or not secured them properly. Now, as you can see, it is, uh, it is quite a size motor dealership. Now, they only deal in used cars here, I believe. I don't think they have new ones. Uh, what we've got, 68 Reg, 68 Reg, 69, 67, 17. So... Uh, yeah, it looks like they only deal in used motors here. But I would suggest that the uh, 
the newer ones and the more expensive ones are actually in the showroom there. So let's have a look, see if we can catch the driver on his way out. I don't know if he will or not. I don't know if he'll want to talk to us. This Volvo look, doesn't look bad. But 26 grand for a second hand car. Absolutely unreal. This was empty for quite a while. As far as I'm aware, it has, uh, it has mostly been a second hand car dealership. Oh, it looks like he's taking some cars away. Now he's obviously only taking a couple because he's not going right up onto the front. Like I say, it takes, uh, takes a lot of skill to do this job. It's not particularly easy. How many vehicles are you taking away, mate? Eight. eight. You're taking eight? So you'll be putting some on the front unit as well then, will you? Yeah. You'll be putting some on the front unit. I've just been saying, it's probably one of the hardest jobs of a truck driver doing this, isn't it? Probably unnecessary, yeah, it's good to be up there. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice to be able to do this. It does take a fair bit of practice. Yeah, I used to do a bit for uh, Valon, have you heard of Valon? Yeah, I've heard of Valon, yeah. Yeah, we used to run uh, BMWs off at docks yeah, years right. and years ago. But, uh, retired now, mate. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Uh, 12 years. Yeah? yeah? I was saying, summit trailers have got a crisscross pattern on. And it was wet and I slipped and I ended up with a big crisscross pattern on my arse as a bruise. Yeah, it weren't very comfortable, I'll tell you. So here he is, look, he's got his parking brake on, he left it in gear as well. And he's uh, securing this vehicle to the trailer with straps. What are you doing then? I make YouTube videos. Uh, what's your handle? What are we PJ Audits. Yeah, PJ, like I'm going to put my PJs on yeah. and audits. Yeah. And uh, I'm interested in all this stuff because, like I say, I used to do it. Yeah. Uh, so. I can't remember it. Yeah. So, where are these going then? He was working the straps, but the ratchet straps to tighten everything up. How far are these going? Just in the plate, so they're under the wheels. How far are these going? Uh, rugby. Where? Rugby. Rugby? So we've got a Nissan and a Audi going out. Makes an interesting video because you don't normally get a lot of chance to watch people loading uh, car transporters. So there you go, you can see he's done this for a bit. So he'll strap this down and then that will go up in the air and now it's all hydraulic. I'm saying one of the problems is getting the high ride height right for going under low bridges because you're not like driving a reefer out like that where you're 14 foot or 14 and a half foot. You're, you're running more or less at maximum height on these, aren't you? Uh, we can run at 16. Right. Uh, obviously it depends what you've got on your load. You what, sorry? It depends obviously what you carry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've only got eight, so I'll probably need about 15 something. Yeah. But yeah. But one of the secrets when you've got a full load is adjusting everything to get everything as low as you can, isn't it? Yeah. That Trading takes a, height out, yeah. yeah, adjusting that so you don't put a dint in the roof or anything <laughs> like that. The roof on. Yeah. So he'll start the engine now. So he's got hydraulic power. And then I think the controls are around the other side. Swapped his gloves, put his dirty gloves on.
you want a set of clean gloves for when you're in a, a vehicle and a set of dirty gloves for, for when you're out. True professional. Fastens all his straps down nicely. So I put a strap on the other rear wheel. So he's got a strap on all four wheels then. That means the vehicle's safe and secure. So when you see him uh, on some of these videos where they're uh, just dropping vehicles <laughs> off the back of a, a car transporter, you know, these films, um, it's all rubbish. It takes a lot of doing. You gotta mess about. It's not just a matter of undoing a clip and off they go. So there it goes. Look, it's lifting up in the air. Now it's got to get it high enough so they can get the other vehicles underneath. And then we'll be able to see how we adjust those ramps on the other side so it can get some on the front. Up we go. So he's just closed his flaps there so they don't catch when he raises everything else up in the air. And look at all those controls he's got there. Hell of a lot. That's the front going up. This bit of a ramp in front of us here, we've got to lower that down as well. So it's taking it way higher than it needs and what he will do is he will lower it down uh, when he's got the cars on and adjust all the height. Uh, it looks like he's putting some on the front. Let's go back here and then we can watch him drive this up. So he needs to make sure he gets it nice and straight. Oh, he's reversing this one up. <coughs> like I say, you've got to know what you're doing when you're doing this. Those ramps aren't very wide. And there he goes, all the way up. And that's it. So he's going to strap this one down now. Right, we'll leave him to get on with what he's doing and not interrupt him anymore. And we'll go and have a look around the, uh, the showroom. Here's one of my favourite cars, Audi TT. Very nice. Only mine's a roadster. Has it been sold, this one? Sorry? Been sold? No, it's a, it's a part exchange. All right. 
there'll be the part exchange that goes down to our prep centre and they'll if there's any issues with it they'll do it at prep centre and then we'll put it back up for resale all right okay i've got a mark one roadster have you yeah i oh, love sweet. it yeah yeah i just love the shape yeah you know yeah it's like out is anyway me yeah big fan of them it's built like a tank, that one of mine. Is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been off at road a long time. I've had a lot of work done to it. What? Yes, please. Yeah, it's been off at road a long time. I've had a lot of work done to it. Is it? Yeah, I've had all, all engine done and bigger turbos and bigger fuel injectors and, you know. Yeah. It's a bit more than standard now. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, if you put your foot down, it's a bit bloody scary. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, my mate just phoned me up and said, your car's ready, do you want it back? And I said, I'll have it back, um, I'm going away in a couple of weeks. I said, so, so just store it for me and then I'll, I'll come and pick it up and then I'll tax it to end the next month. You know, March, it's not quite as cold, as miserable as January. Yeah. And, uh, and tax on it's quite expensive. Is it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's like four hundred pound a year road tax on it. So. It's uh, a lot, isn't it? Yeah, if you pay it monthly, I think it's thirty-eight pound a month or something That's like that. Spread cost a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna keep it off at road until I'm actually gonna get out and drive it, you yeah. know. And it's stored under cover and everything, so. But it's got to do MOT on it. Mm. MOTs run out and everything. So. Yeah. So what do you do here? Just second-hand vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've always done second-hand vehicles at this place. I don't think it's ever been a car dealership. This has it. Yeah, it's always been a car dealership. It was. Evans. No, I mean, uh, like a, a Ford dealers or uh, a no, main dealers. No, I think Evans Elshaw had it before. Yeah. And then it was empty for a long time. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. So how many cars do you have in here then? Around about 400 on site. On site? Yeah. Bloody hell. And are you part of a national...? There's, um, there's eight, eight um, depots across country. Right. Right. And do they all just deal with second-hand motors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, brave. I normally wear shorts, but I ain't had them on for a couple of weeks. Aren't you? Now. No, it's not what you'd call short weather, is it? <laughs> well, when I'm working, I get hot, so I'm always on shorts. Yeah, what do you do here? Car valeting. Oh, you're at Valeter, are you? Yeah. So you're in that cold water all the time, and you get hot? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but your fingers are dropping off. They're not bad, actually. Yeah? Yeah, they're not bad. You get used to it? Yeah, yeah, that's what you get used to it. What you recording? <coughs> <clears throat> I make YouTube videos. Oh, do you? Hmm. I'm just doing a couple of low. I'm film workshops, so yeah. I'm just doing a couple of local car dealerships at the minute. Mm. And then I saw him loading this, and obviously I'm interested because, yeah. you know, like I say, it's something I used to do. Mm. So um, I thought I'd come down and video him for a bit. Oh, yeah. But it's, it, it is a. You said 400 cars on site? Yeah. So where are the rest of them then? Round bike. You got a load round there's, bike? There's quite a few round bike there. Yeah. Alright. Oh, I'll probably see. I'm going to fly a drone over in a bit. So I'll probably see them when I fly a drone over. Yeah. yeah. So how long have you worked here then? Uh, since July. Yeah? Yeah. Have you always been into valeting? No, no. I only started valeting in May. So what did you do before this then? I've been in the cycling industry for seven years. All right. So I was hence the shorts. Hence the shorts. Cycle to work every day. Yeah. And um, I used to be store manager over at JJ Cycles in Sheffield. Oh, in Sheffield, yeah. yeah. Down near Sheffield United's football yeah, ground there. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I left there and I went over to Halfords in workshop. So I had a year at Halfords and I left there and I've come here. Do you like Halfords? It was all right, but I weren't going anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. I yeah, they want all graduates and stuff to yeah. be managers and things, don't they? There. Well, I wanted to go downstairs in the bottom side of the store, but the um, 
because I've been in bikes, I'm good with bikes. It just left me in bike at all time, and I didn't want it. I yeah. quite enjoyed fitting batteries and bulbs and things. Yeah, like that. yeah. And you'd had enough of bikes by then, I imagine. Bikes, yeah. So yeah. I, I take it you're a big cyclist yourself, are you? Yeah. yeah. What's the longest bike run you've done in one one session? In one session, it's 161 miles. <laughs> yeah. Where was that? I, I cycled to uh, Cleethorpe and back. All right. Yeah. From, are you from Workshop? Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. Well, I was from Staveley then, so from Staveley to uh, to uh, Cleethorpes and back. We only had 10 minutes at Cleethorpes. <laughs> didn't even have time for fish and chips there. We didn't, know. We got there at 10 o'clock. In the morning? Yeah. yeah. How long did it take you? Altogether, nine, nine hours, 45 minutes. There's some bloody big hills coming into Grimsby, aren't there? Yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah, you know, and there's that um, big one at Caister there. Yeah. That's a that's a long steep hill, that it one, is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I take it you you do a racing bike, not a mountain Great bike. Bar racing bike, yeah. 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 Did you ever do it professionally or competitively? Yeah. Well, I've, I've done I've done competitions before. Yeah. Yeah. It's that last one, then, buddy. That one as well, yeah. Be careful with Audi, mate, they're my favourite. Oh, it's a diesel, is it? Ah, I don't want a yeah. diesel. Mind you, they're really good on juice, aren't they? 62 yeah. gallon, them. Right, let's go inside and have a look. 160 odd mile in a day. It's good going, that. And they were only there 10 minutes. Right, let's have a look what they've got in here. Well, that's nice. Mercedes convertible. 38 and a half grand. Bloody hell. It's a lot of money. Hello, you okay? I'm steady, mate. Are you? I can I'm just having a look round and doing a bit of videoing, mate. That's all. Right, so. okay, okay. What is it you're videoing? I make YouTube videos. All right. And we, what, what kind of stuff we're looking at? Just industry mostly. I started watching Lado filling a uh, car transporter up. All right. So I generally come round, have a look around, see what's happening, and then I'll fly a drone over the top, get some aerial shots and things, and uh, yeah. and then edit it all. Try and make people look as good as I can, <laughs> no no and then uh, and then stick them on YouTube okay, okay. for people to watch. This is a nice bit of motor in it. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, and yeah. it's a thirteen Reginald. Yeah, it's um, it's our director's uh, owner of the company's ex car. It's um, it's got another fifty five thousand pounds worth of extras on that. Bloody hell! Yeah, it's a good piece, good bit of kit. It wants to be for 38 and a half grand, doesn't it? It's worth a lot more than that, my friend. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh... I bet it's fast as shit, yeah, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's ridiculously quick car. Yeah. Have you driven it? I've not. I've been in the passenger seat. I've not driven it myself. Yeah? I trust myself in that. Yeah, who drove it? Uh, we had a, te a guy test drive it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah? Yeah. Did he scare you? Uh, no, not really. We're, you know, he's one of these guys that drives fast cars like this, so... He's used yeah, to it. He's used to it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. A uh, Lado outsider who does valeting with shorts and stuff. You've got 400 cars here. There is, yeah. Nearly, yeah. Yeah, we sell a lot of cars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was saying it were empty for a long while, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I've only been here, I've only been here myself six, about six months. Yeah. When I got here, there's only 60 cars here, so yeah, the um, business has really picked up. So if somebody wants a car and you've not got it in stock, you've got, is it six other depots or five another other eight, depots? Another seven other depots. Another seven other depots, yeah. so you can have a look, see if they've got Great, it. Yeah, if we've got it in stock and get it moved here for them, if we're the local dealer. Yeah, where's your local, uh, where's your other depots then, do you uh, know? They're just got all over the country, there's far south as with them. And as far north as uh, I think the northern one is Nelson, near Burnley. Oh, right. Uh, other side of Hill then? Yeah. Yeah, they're having it bad over there, I think, with they weather are, today, yeah. aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they want to keep it. We don't want it over here, do we? No, correct. 
Yeah. Well, I'm well, going to leave it to it. All right, uh, how much would... How much has been with 27 grand? Yeah. Now oh, this one's not bad. 19 and a half for 67 reg. But I bet it's not the same class of motor as the one I've just looked at. Oh, this is a four seater, other one were a two seater. Still looks nice though. Yeah, still looks very nice. Yeah, it's got centre console and everything, touch screen, all the lot. And then we've got an Alfa Romeo. Now, I had an Alfa Sud when I was young. Uh, the only problem with it was when it rained, it kind of melted. <laughs> But other than that, it were a bloody fast car. I bet there's not many Alpha Suds left in country now. I bet they've all melted, I mean, rotted away, I mean, uh, been scrapped. Well, that's about it in here. They've got to sell a lot of cars if they've got 400 in stock, haven't they? How much is this Beamer? 27 grand, 18 Ridge. M3, well that's why, could do with a clean, it's a bit mucky on there, look. Valitor's not doing his job very well. Yeah, M3, 18 reg. Yeah, these are as fast as stink as well. I'm not a big BMW fan though, I'll be honest. So eight and a half grand for that. It's a bloody lot of money. Right, let's head out. Right, the transporter man's got everything on and looks like it's a full load so he's put the smaller cars on the bottom deck so we can get the, uh, the top deck as low as possible. Now this is a big trick this, this is the trick here is to get everything as low as you possibly can without damaging the roof so you can get under low bridges and things. So he'll adjust it a bit at a time here until he gets it as he wants it. Stow everything away that's loose. Put his ramps back in, which are there, look. And then he'll be off. He might he'll probably have to, uh, probably have to pick his paperwork up. And then he'll be gone. Now look at that, look. He's got a measuring pole out, so he can measure his height. What height you got? 15 foot. 15, oh that's not bad that. So you got to hold to your thing in your cab now, so it shows in your cab. Yeah, but because it's illegal to drive with the wrong height in your cab, innit? Yeah, yeah. All right mate, well, thanks for your uh, time anyway. Right, so all he's got to do is put his ramps in the back and he's, he's off. See you later. So you were from Liverpool with badge in front. Oh, I was born there. All right. I've just not lived there for 30, 30 odd years. All right. Don't you have to inspect them before you put them on and everything? Or is that done by somebody else? Depends where you collect them from. Right. So I take it that here somebody else has done it before you've put them on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because obviously you're responsible for any damage now, aren't you? Sort of, yeah. To a degree, yeah. I've seen them rip petrol tanks out and all sorts of things. Yeah. Alright, up. 
So there he goes, he's going to put his ramps on back and he's going to bugger off. How interesting was that? Right then everybody, that ends our visit to V12 Sports and Classics. I hope you've enjoyed it, what a wonderful set of people they were. Uh, and it's time to move on. So if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, please share, please subscribe. And I'll see you there in the next one. Bye everybody, see you soon.